Hey everyone, this is Shainu. Today I'll be talking about CSC 6342, also known as DVA or Data and Visual Analytics. This is one of the hardest courses that they offer in Georgia Tech for the OMSA program. A lot of people get scared over this course, mainly because most of the people who are taking this course don't have a strong background in coding. Um, so that scares people. Um, before I talk about this course, I just want to give you a background on myself, just to give you an understanding of what you need to have prior to taking this course. So I did my bachelor's in computer science. So coding is something that I wouldn't say I enjoy, but I like to do. Uh, I'm not someone who likes to code over the weekend, so I don't have that much interest for it but in my line of work I do have to work with SQL and JavaScript and sometimes I also have to work with Python so that's kind of my background if you don't have a good understanding on these three languages JavaScript Python and SQL then you might struggle in this course and what I would recommend is maybe take the summer off and then t you know go through those courses so, so that way you'll be ready to take it in the in the following semester and a good reference to learn these languages would be like W3 schools so you can go to W3 schools.com and by the way these links will be in the description below so don't worry about posting this video uh, and so you can go to SQL you can go to Python you can go to JavaScript and kind of learn just the basics I'm not talking about go extensively into the data structure portion but just understand the basic stuff or you can also watch you know YouTube videos I'm sure there's like a million YouTube videos that goes through D3 JavaScript, SQL, and Python. And by the way, I mentioned D3 JavaScript, not JavaScript. Those two are completely different from each other. D3 is used for visualization, and a good reference for that would be uh, blocks.org. Um, you can go here and see what you can do with D3. For example, map tree here, you can see, just click through. And this is the coding that you have to do for D3 JavaScript, right? Um, so it's it's a little bit different and what I would recommend for D3 JavaScript is either YouTube or LinkedIn Learning which is provided with your Georgia Tech account it's free for you um, so you can just watch a video there and try to get a better understanding uh, on how you can code with D3 JavaScript so that's my first recommendation now let's talk about the grading structure of this course so you have 50 percentage you can get from homework and 50 percentage you can get from project so you will have four homeworks that you need to complete in order for you to get the 50 percentage and in all four of these homeworks the commonality is the coding language that i mentioned it, it could be either python javascript or sql you have about two and a half weeks to finish each of these homeworks so that's that's a good amount of time for you to kind of understand the outcome and also continue working on it and what i would recommend is do not wait until last minute to do your homework. Start working on this the day that it releases, which is the Saturday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern. As soon as it get released, look into it, try to understand what they're expecting, go through the documentation at least once, uh, like fully go through the documentation at least once, understand the outcome. They sometimes provide sample outputs on what it needs to look like. So that is sometimes very helpful when you're coding. I would say the most difficult homework that I had was homework number two, which is primarily only focused in D3 JavaScript. There's a lot of things that you need to do with D D3 JavaScript in that homework. It kind of freaks you out. Each homework will have about three to five questions and uh, you know it, it, the the point system varies sometimes you have question number one that is 40 points and the rest of the two is maybe 30 30. that's how you know grading is kind of split apart what i would always recommend is start with the lowest grading points so like start with like something that gives you 20 points before you start on something that is 40 points because the 20 points is very likely a lot easier and it gives you a good confidence boost to continue and tackle each of the homeworks that you have. Once you finish each question within that homework, you will then need to upload it to Gradescope and make sure that it passes Gradescope. I loved Gradescope mainly because, you know, I was thinking like once you do the homework, someone has to manually go through and grade it, but thank God that's not the case. So when you upload something into Gradescope, it gives you a feedback on exactly what is expecting and how it doesn't match that expectation. And then maybe you can go back to your code and figure out you know the solution to make it work in grade scope so that's homeworks now let's talk about the project so you have just this one big project and in this project you can have up to six people so four to six people is the range of members you can have within your uh, group what i would highly recommend you to do is on the first day this course is available go to piazza type up a post saying hey my name is blah and uh, this is what i'm strong at this 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 is my background i need a team and in your post be very honest do not 
tell them something that you cannot provide. Don't be that person that says, I'm pro at everything and when the time comes for you to shine <laughs> and they give you the baton, you don't know shit. <laughs> you don't want to be that person in your, in your group because that could just really affect your whole team and the members of that team could also report you to the TAs um, to let them know like, hey, this guy doesn't know anything and he's not a good asset to the project team. So what should I do with this guy? And <laughs> that could really affect your grade. So that being said, find a team. Once you're part of the team, then what you need to do is to find a PM, a project manager. And that's very important for you to have. The project manager should be someone who is going to be the one submitting all the you know documentations for your progress for the project. Um, you know, this person, this PM should have a good leadership skill set. I was the PM in my group. Um, and so what you should do as a PM is listen to everyone's strengths and background and then pick a project idea that meets everyone's background, if that makes sense. You might have some people in your team that is very ambitious and gives you all these crazy project ideas is amazing, but you might not have the people to do it. And so I would highly recommend you to really assess each project idea and then use that notes that you took for from each team member of their background to then pick that one project because <laughs> if you don't do that you will burn yourself a lot of other people that I know in the course that was not part of my group they're still struggling and they don't have a deliverable at the end and they're like always late and that really affects your grade so so make sure that you understand each of you know each member's strengths and weaknesses and then assign work based on that so if if you have some someone who's really good coder, then that person can do the coding work while the others do the documentation stuff. And there's a lot of documentation that you have to do. Um, so you can see here in this website, there's five sections that they are showing. You have a proposal, a proposal presentation, progress report, final poster presentation, and final report. The proposal is pretty much like answering Halmeyer's question. There's nine questions that you need to answer uh, about your project idea. And the proposal presentation needs to be done by the person who is the primary contact, which is your project project manager. And that's just like 5% of your grade, overall grade. So everybody's 5% pretty much. <laughs> You're, you need to make sure you do a good job for your team. And then the rest of the three, you have progress report, final poster presentation and final report. And then you have something called final poster presentation that comes at the end of your project. Obviously, uh, each team member has to make a presentation that is three minutes long. I'm not going to go, you know, very detailed on each of these because if you click on this link, which again, all of these links are going to be provided in the description below, it gives you a very well detailed information on what they're expecting. So that's the CSC 6242 project. I really hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, make sure you like it, make sure you share it with your friends. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time for watching this video. And, uh, and if you're feeling generous, you know, just send some money in my Cash App or Venmo, which is going to be listed in the description below as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one for now. Bye.